Hey everybody, the bull market is back and the bank crisis is over. Let me explain. The signal that the bull market was back was the advent of the bank crisis. What? Well, it's true. A modern bank crisis is a good signal to buy stocks. Here's why. In the old days, a bank crisis where banks would go bankrupt would be very bearish for stocks. Look at the panic of 1907 or the crash of 1929. Both were caused by bank failures. The reason that they were bearish back then was that bank failures effectively reduced the money supply because the banks were the main factors affecting money supply. In 1907, there was no Federal Reserve Bank, and in 1929, the Fed was actually contracting money supply before the crash, and in fact, they were the ones that precipitated the crash by shrinking money supply. But the ensuing bank failures caused the money supply to shrink even further. In the old days, a bank failure meant that the equity in that bank plus some of the deposits of the, uh, of the depositors were lost in the bankruptcy. So that meant that money supply shrank. And that shrinkage of money supply or liquidity caused the stock market to decline. But starting in 1987, in particular, Fed Chairman Alan Greenspan decided that stock market crashes were a bad thing and he flooded the money with oh, he flooded the economy with money or liquidity to support the stock market this is now called the greenspan put which is the idea that the fed will come in to support the stock market if there is a major bear market now we've seen every fed since then come into the market every time stocks drop about 30 percent to support the stock market but then in 2008, the Fed effectively, the Fed and the federal government effectively nationalized the major banks. The Treasury under Treasury Secretary Hank Paulson, the Fed under Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke, Helicopter Ben, we like to call him, and the New York Fed under Timmy TurboTax Geithner called a meeting of the major commercial and industrial banks and told them what they were going to do. No ifs, ands, or buts. This is what you're going to do, period. No choice. These commands that the feds, the federal government and the Federal Reserve, the two feds, these commands included taking over investment banks like Merrill Lynch, accepting government money in return for greater regulation and government control. If you didn't want the money, you still had to take it. Converting some investment banks like Goldman Sachs into, from investment banks to commercial banks. The banks were forced to do these things, period. They, this effectively gave control of the banks to the Fed and the federal government, and they've been there ever since. If you're too big to fail, trust me, we won't let you fail, but on the other hand, we run you. That's what the federal government has been saying since 2008. By the way, there was only one bank who said no to these conditions, and that was Morgan Stanley, which survived the banking crisis without government aid. And I suspect most of those other ones would have survived as well. Maybe all of them. Now, small banks still have some autonomy. Small banks like SVB, Signature, First Republic, often because they are state chartered, not federally chartered. SVB is an example of that. But the big banks are now run strategically by the Fed and the federal government. So, same thing in Europe, as we can see in the shotgun wedding between UBS and Credit Suisse. Neither one of them wanted to do it. But the Swiss National Bank came in and said, this is what you're going to do. Shareholders, we're not going to even ask you. Bondholders, don't care what you think. We, the Swiss National Bank, are going to force this shotgun wedding. So we had several banks go bankrupt in the U.S. in the last week, largely because they had losses in their portfolios of government bonds they owned. They had a run, which forced them to sell those bonds at a loss, 
which then destroyed their equity. I'll tell you the insanity of all this maybe tomorrow. So the two feds, the Federal Reserve Bank and the federal government, panicked and flooded the banking system with money or liquidity to stop any further runs on any bank in America. Almost the first place that that massive liquidity will go to is into the stock market, and sure enough, stocks are now rallying. Right now, I look for the Fed to hike rates today and then pause. But at the same time, they will keep flooding the banking system with money. They have already boosted assets by over $300 billion in just the last week and will likely to flood hundreds of billions of dollars more in the coming weeks. They are saying to the banking system, you can have all the money you want, but we're going to charge you a little bit more for it. In addition, the Fed is saying that the safety of the banking system is more important than the fight against inflation. And that is a very important change in focus. So you may expect, number one, inflation will start to increase again almost right away. Number two, the recession will be delayed by months, possibly into early 2024. Number three, the stock market will rally as it already is. Number four, the dollar will tumble as a new supply of dollars meets not an increase in demand. Gold will rally on the back of the increase in inflation and the decline in real interest rates. And finally, the banking financial crisis is not over, but it will be delayed until 2024. That much money is going to come into the system and keep it supported. So how do we make money from all this? I think I just gave you a list of ideas. We'll talk to you later.